As a second example for the uh, canonical distribution, we're going to think about the mean energy of an ideal gas. And I would like to first of all remind you what we know about the ideal gas. We have uh, capital N uh, gas molecules uh, in a box and you can see that this is a dilute gas, low pressure, low density. Uh, the, the box has dimensions Lx, uh, Ly and Lz and uh, because the, the gas molecules are not non-interacting, this basically implies that the potential energy V, which is normally as a function of X, Y and uh, Z in three-dimensional three space, this is going to be equal to zero. So, um, and the other thing uh, I would like to highlight here is that we have a total of capital N gas molecules and number density NV, capital N divided by the total volume, where the volume is going to be LX, LY, LZ. Those are the dimensions of our box. Now, um, Furthermore, I'm going to assume that I'm talking about a non-degenerate gas here. So that's not uh, one of the assumptions in ideal gas, but I'm going to talk about this uh, special case. Uh, it's going to be a non-degenerate case. Uh, basically, this implies that I have only a one state corresponding to one energy for the uh, system of the consisting of ideal gas molecules uh, and I would like to uh, highlight here what would happen if this is a degenerate gas um, in the case of degenerate gas we have uh, two other types of statistics uh, applying uh, either Bose-Einstein or Fermi-Dirac statistics which is not the subject of this course uh, this is something you will uh, discuss in your uh, more advanced statistical mechanics course uh, physics 421 so for now we're only dealing with non-degenerate gas um, it's again a classical gas the average separation between the uh, gas molecules is much greater than the de broglie wavelength h divided by uh, p uh, so this is a classical uh, gas All right, so we're looking at the classical limit. Um, the gas is now at equilibrium at temperature uh, T. Uh, so classical mechanics applies and I have set the absolute temperature uh, of this gas, absolute uh, temperature of this gas is T. Um, basically, this is, these are the assumptions that go into my uh, discussion here. Capital N identical gas molecules, ideal gas molecules, they each have, each molecule has mass M. So let me note that here. Each molecule has mass M. It is a non-interacting uh, free uh, gas, therefore I have a zero potential energy. I'm talking about the non-degenerate case, uh, even though the gas molecules uh, as an entity are indistinguishable. Um, there is only one energy corresponding to one state. And the degenerate gas would be discussed by using Bose-Einstein or Fermi-Dirac statistics depending on the nature of the uh, degeneracy. Uh, 
so that's postponed to our more advanced statistical mechanics course the gas is at equilibrium uh, at absolute temperature t so this is equilibrium uh, situation we're talking about now in order to apply my uh, canonical uh, distribution to this problem I have to identify uh, which one is the small system which one is the uh, heat reservoir so small system the system A that I have called system A in my previous discussion is just one molecule so basically I isolate one molecule that's the small system uh, with few degrees of freedom compared to the large system A prime which is the environment of this one molecule it is rest of the molecules and they are forming a heat reservoir and remember that I'm assuming this is a non-interacting gas so the only type of interaction between gas molecules is kinetic energy exchange during uh, collusions rare elastic collusions and that basically implies I have thermal interaction so there is only the thermal interaction between the gas molecules then what is the probability of finding system A in state R what is the probability of finding system A which is one molecule in state R well the answer is given by uh, canonical distribution so if the corresponding energy is ER um, or epsilon R because it's one molecule it's going to be equal to a constant times e to the minus beta er where that constant is basically found by summing over all possible states e to the minus beta er because the probabilities should be normalized and this beta is by definition 1 over kt so that's our canonical distribution and this is the answer uh, to this question now we have to distinguish two cases uh, so let's talk about the monatomic gas for a monatomic ideal gas we're going to have uh, in this limit purely kinetic energy contribution and that is due to uh, translations of the center of mass all right so monatomic gas example this could be inert gas helium or argon for uh, for example um, the total kinetic energy is given classically by px squared over 2m plus py squared over 2m plus pz squared over 2m now if I consider uh, quantum mechanical effects uh, this would be replaced by h bar square kx square over 2m uh, plus h bar square ky square over 2m plus h bar square kz square um, over 2m so remember that the momentum uh, is given by h bar k so momentum uh, is h bar ki -th component and this k has to be quantized it is an integer times pi divided by l sub i for three-dimensional gas 
uh, trapped in a box where i is x y and z this quantum number n sub i starts from one one two three remember it cannot be zero if it is zero it would mean that the particle does not exist so therefore we find that the energy levels uh, discrete energy levels would be given by pi square h bar square divided by 2m nx square divided by lx square plus ny square divided by ly square plus nz square divided by lz square so um, when we treat this uh, quantum mechanically when we have a three-dimensional uh, non-degenerate gas in a container its corresponding energy levels are given by uh, this expression where h bar is again Planck's constant divided by 2 pi and we have we need basically for one molecule three quantum numbers nx ny nz so number of degrees of freedom was three and we actually calculated the uh, density of states for this uh, case in our previous videos you will remember uh, and now i would like to extend this discussion to another case uh, basically we could also have a polyatom polyatomic gas a gas that a um, gas molecule consists of more than one atom polyatomic uh, gas example could be methane ch4 it could be oxygen molecules etc so polyatomic gas now what is the difference between polyatomic and monatomic gas in terms of the contributions to energy well the energy total energy of one molecule total mechanical energy uh, first is going to consist of a kinetic component which is due to translations of the center of mass and then there will be a, another component which is due to vibrations and rotations with respect to the center of mass okay so these two components epsilon k is once again the same term that appeared in monatomic gas it is kinetic energy which is uh, due to translational motion of the center of mass Uh, so in classical terms this is one half mv square so this is just to remind you and then we have the other two terms we have contributions from possible contributions from vibrational and rotational kinetic energy but an important difference between this term and epsilon k is that this one is with respect to the center of mass so one is the motion of the center of mass the other one is with respect to the center of uh, mass so epsilon k the kinetic term gives us the usual uh, three quantum numbers nx ny and nz and epsilon i uh, gives us one or more quantum numbers n sub i one or more quantum numbers then i'm going to have uh, for the state r a total energy epsilon k given by the combination of three quantum numbers nx ny and z plus epsilon i vibrations and rotations 
uh, specified by the quantum number or numbers n sub i. So this will be the total energy. Now an important point here is that because this epsilon sub epsilon i is due to the uh, motion with respect to center of mass um, so epsilon i is independent independent of the dimensions of the box lx ly lz because uh, it is due to motion with respect to center of mass okay not the motion of the center of mass it's with respect to center of mass so it's independent of the box dimensions okay so I was able to quantify uh, the contributions to the uh, energy for the art quantum state of this uh, system A which is just one molecule so I have assumed that this molecule has mass M total number of molecules is capital N free molecules um, there is no potential energy the average distance between the molecules is much greater than the Broglie wavelength so we, I can think of this also as a classical gas uh, absolute temperature is T these gas molecules can collide with each other so the only interaction that you will see is thermal interaction the gas I'm assuming in this discussion is a non-degenerate gas that is to say there is only one energy corresponding to one state degenerate gas would be treated by Fermi Dirac or Bose-Einstein statistics in a more advanced course uh, the small system A in the canonical distribution is one molecule, system A prime, which acts as the heat reservoir, is rest of the molecules. Now the probability of having a state R for one molecule is given by the canonical distribution e to the minus beta E R divided by sum over all states e to the minus beta E R. For a monatomic gas, there is only kinetic contribution, which is uh, P squared over 2M, and it consists of X, Y, and Z terms. Uh, in the quantum mechanical treatment, uh, it's H bar square K square over 2M, because P is equal to H bar K in quantum mechanics, and H bar is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, and from our treatment, a quantum well treatment basically standing wave solutions gave us that this k should be quantized in units of pi over l uh, and this n quantum number starts from one it's an integer one two three and the corresponding energy is pi square h bar square over 2m and i square over l i square terms and x square over l x square plus n y square over l y square plus n z square over l z square the difference between monatomic and polyatomic gas is this additional energy term due to vibrations and rotations rotational kinetic energy with respect to the center of mass which is independent of the dimensions of the box because it's motion due to center of uh, with respect to center of mass and the total energy I have to consider both this translational kinetic energy term and vibrational and rotational kinetic energy terms as well in general.